Today I wanted to go over many of the new permits that have been filed recently by Tesla. But uh, as you'll see here momentarily, there are just so many permits that are covering what is going on inside the factory to prepare new production lines and extend the production footprint in the vertical and horizontal. And in also the much of the construction that we're seeing all over the site to the north end, south end, and on the west side. So I decided to put these into two parts. I'm going to combine them in this video. So we'll see part one first and then it will follow immediately with part two. Beginning on the north side where this construction project has been underway for a few months, you would recall that I pulled some permits and it was originally called the Central Campus Support Facility, but I had heard that this was redesignated as the Cortex 2.0 and that I wanted to find permits to show that. Uh, originally, this uh, was the group term for this construction project with three facilities and two water tanks. But when that was changed to Cortex-2, uh, we saw on the ground that that was no longer the case, and it's at least one large structure. Now, with these permits here, it now clearly says Cortex 2.0. This particular permit is for the underground mains. Another permit is talking about the foundations, and that is what we're seeing here with this image. That includes the perimeter grade beam and the footings. And also, we see this third permit with the Cortex 2 building shell. That's the steel structure that is being erected on top top of the foundations and the perimeter grade beam. There is room for a lot more changes and construction. That'll be something I continue to monitor, but I'm glad to be at least able to show you permits now that do in fact refer to this as Cortex 2.0. Now we're going to go down to the south end extension of Giga Texas. And as you recall, this was for Cortex 1.0. Originally, this was described as a location for administrative offices, but that was changed for the Cortex 1.0 installation. However, a new permit talks about preliminary steel for the headquarters. And I believe that this is going to be adding more administration building uh, structures inside. And this is going to expand the number of offices and administrative capabilities that they have for the headquarters. And this is gonna allow the use of extra space that Cortex-1 did not uh, need to use. There is a lot of space there. In addition to that, there is another permit. This is phase two of the data center inf infrastructure. And this is pretty much to complete the rest of the expansion inside and also in conjunction with that the headquarters steel erection that's going on inside. So definitely something to watch as Tesla completes this part of the factory. Our next stop is on the east side at the body and white part of the facility. And we've been watching a lot of construction material being taken into that uh, temporary platform on the second floor. Also the work that's going on on that secondary main entrance with all that plywood on those doors. Now we've been seeing a lot of work with mezzanines being as assembled and installed inside this part of the factory. This particular permit talks about floor reinforcement and concrete pads and this hints at uh, some robotic assembly stations or at least some very heavy equipment that's going to be installed in addition to all of those mezzanines and additional work to expand the space and also expand the second floor into multiple different floors. Now going to the west side of directly opposite of the body in white is the General Assembly, both General Assembly 1 and 2, which is also referred to as GAX. And we see that there are several permits, one with a 3D print lab relocation and the cyber body off changes. Also, this is the subframe line updates. And this seems to match up with those new castings for the RoboTaxi or CyberCab that calls them rear subframes. We also see that the legacy drive unit is being demolished and that is to upgrade those systems for new equipment and also new drive lines. And then finally, this permit, which is brand new and awaiting a response, it's not completed yet. Uh, it's uh, talking about the 5DU space readiness and this has to do with the uh, permit for preparing a specific space, possibly a fifth designated unit 5DU for operational unit. This is related to manufacturing or assembly production lines and is another part of the factory that is being expanded, uh, most likely for new vehicles and the cyber cab. 
And the final permit that I want to talk about has to do with the Welcome and Visitors Center. We've been watching this construction area just to the northwest of the factory near Tesla Road. And as I had mentioned, I had had word that this was going to be the Welcome Center. Been able to get the permits now to show that 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 is in fact the case. This is the permit for that Welcome Center. Its uh, code is WCT8. And uh, this is going to be a really easily accessible from Tesla Road for the general public. I also found out that there are a, two more permits that have to do with the Employee and Visitor Center. And this is one of those two permits. Another one is coming up here. I don't know if these are going to be part of the exact same facility or maybe it will be a separate facility joined together or built on this particular site. In any case, it looks like Tesla is definitely preparing for both the public and new employees to have that welcome and a visitor center. And I think that's going to be really great for all of us in future events here at Giga Texas. We'll just continue with where we left off. Now, previously, we talked about the permits and the construction for Cortex-2 just north of this parking lot, and that's displacing many of the temporary trailers that Tesla has used for the last few years for many functions. One of them is security. This permit is talking about a new trailer system being brought here to this parking lot for security. In addition to that, the employee and visitor support area trailers, that office space uh, and check-in is being moved to these new trailers that Aries Construction has just recently added. And this is also going to allow for the new higher orientation trailer and those functions to be added here as well. Now, this is the location with the original trailer system. You can see how it's too close to all of that construction that is underway. So they have to move those away. And these permits about the office trailer with additional training space being moved away. They're also going to be doing some additional outside uh, functions that are going to be moving to that uh, parking lot just to, to the south the mail room and the team where trailer is going to be moved and in addition to that the bookable trailer uh, training trailer assembly space is all being relocated and this is to facilitate that construction on this north end so moving across the highway to the west side end of line outbound lot and the west support facility uh, there have been a lot of changes very recently in this entire section to prepare for this outbound logistics this is just a summary of many of the permits that have been completed very recently, but there is a new one that I think is pretty exciting and it has to do with this, which is the end of line semi Atlas stator project. And now what this may be is to allow the Tesla semi to operate in the outbound lot and maybe provide the transportation functions for the new vehicles. This stator is a component of the electrical motor for the uh, semis and it may be related to the maintenance that is needed. So perhaps the, they will be setting up all of this system for semis very soon. So pretty neat to see. Now going all the way over to the battery cathode plant, I found some permits that I found very interesting and intriguing and I wanted to share with you here. This first one is talking about the cathode new vehicle launch system pilot shop. And this is something that they've been building out within the structure here. They also have this permit, which is the new vehicle launch center phase three. And why would this be over here at the cathode building? I have a couple of ideas. First of all, this new vehicle launch center may be for showcasing, testing, or preparing new vehicle models for launch. Still not sure, but I want to get clarity on that. The other thing is that the cathode building is kind of far away and isolated. So they may be working on some of the new vehicles over here to just keep away from prying eyes. So more to follow. I just thought that was very interesting. Moving to the stamping and stamping two sections of the factory on the east side, I found an interesting new permit. This one has to do with stamping bay five, the HPCS, which stands for high pressure cooling system. This is often used in industrial settings for equipment cooling. And this may be related to the large cooling pipes that we've been seeing on the east staging yard at the welding shops as they've been preparing for them and they've been moving into the factory. So this may be related to preparing the uh, stamping two section, which was added later on from the original stamping one for some additional stamping machines or at least some additional capabilities. Moving to the die shop next to the battery cathode building, we've been seeing a lot of construction going on inside for a reinforced new slab, and it may be related to this particular 
permit, which is the Die Shop EDM Sinker 2, and that is a specific piece of equipment or process called electrical discharge machining. It's a sinker machine which uses a kind of a bath of oil and uh, it is able to do precision manufacturing to create complex shapes and metal, often for dyes and molds. This inset image gives you an idea of what that looks like. And this is probably related to expanding the capabilities here at the die shop to do more manufacturing, testing, and maintenance of dies, specifically the dies for the Giga Presses. And finally, over at the electrical switch yard and the Mega Pack, we know that they are doing a lot of work to prepare for the expansion of the switch yard, and they've been installing the Mega Pack. I found some permits that are pertinent to this. This talks about the battery electric storage system or the Mega Packs, and this is doing the final work for that wiring and connection and operation. But I also found this, which is the LCRA switch yard expansion, which validates what I've been saying as far as doubling the size of the switch yard. LCR is the Lower Colorado River Authority, and this is their project as uh, all of the electrical systems here. It's part of the uh, way Texas operates with electrical, and they are working in conjunction with Tesla for this installation. So there you have it, long part one and part two about a significant number of permits that have been filed recently to change, modify, upgrade, and just overall improve the capabilities of Giga Texas. I hope that you found these part one and two informative and helpful, and I hope it helps put into context what we are seeing.